Hi everyone, today I'm going to show you how to convert a class component into a functional component. So first off I've just got my React set up, so my HTML and some just basic CSS that I'm going to use today. Um, then I've got some JavaScript set up, so I've got this um, functional component which is my app which I'm rendering using the React DOM and I've got the Babel preprocessor. So I've set that up all in CodePen and you can see that I've got the relevant um, scripts imported so that I can write this. So first off I'm just going to start by coding up my class component and then I'll show you how to go ahead and convert that into a functional component. This will be useful if you're modernizing some of your previous code or working with um, other people's code you'll understand it a bit better um so yeah or if you're working on with older tutorials you can look at how they do things and convert it to a more modern format um so basically i'll be showing you how to use the props so um with the class component you can have a constructor if you're setting up state and you can and that's where the props will get passed in and you'll need to call super props um, and then you can set the state by using this.state equals and the object and then whatever values inside that object. Um, so I've got this count um, count property against my state object. In um, class components you're going to have some lifecycle methods. So you've got like component did mount and component will unmount. So when the component does mount, I'm going to alert class component mounted. And when the component will unmount, then I'm going to alert that the class component is unmounting. So those are similar to the use effect um, life cycle. So you'll, I'll show you how to convert those a bit later and I'll show you them comparatively in action. But yeah. That's um, two important lifecycle methods, one for um, when your component's about to show and one for when your component is about to not show. Then you've also got the render function that basically returns um, what is going to be shown when your component's on screen. Um, so that's the JSX part of things and why we need the Babel preprocessor. So I'm just going to show a div here um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show my state variable in here, so my count. And I'm also just going to show myself using a property that's been passed here, just so you can see how properties differ um, between class and functional components and um, also obviously how state differs between class and functional components. So I've got this... Um, this uh, paragraph basically and it's going to say hi from class component then I've got another one that's going to display the count and then I'm going to have a button so you'll go this dot state dot whatever property name to access a property in state and then I'm also going to have a button that is going to increment the state so once again, like this will vary slightly from functional components. So on click, we're going to um, set the state. And so to do that, we call this dot set state. And then we pass the updated state in. So I'm going to pass this count as equal um, to this dot state dot count plus one because I'm just wanting to increment it. And I'm going to just give some text to that button to say that I want to increment. And now I've completed my um, class component. I can go ahead and I'm going to go and add that to my app so that you can sort of see how it works on screen. And then I'll go and convert that to a functional component. So inside my app, I'm just going to set some states here. Um, so my app is a functional component itself. Um, I'm going to have this show class component state. 
and it's going to have a corresponding function to set it called set show class component. To initiate state in a functional component, you'll use react.useState and then you'll pass in a default value. So I'm going to not show that by default because I want to show you the components mounting alert. So now here I'm going to create a button and um, I'm also going to conditionally show that class component depending on whether that um, state variable is set to true or false. I'm also going to pass a property to that component. So the property I'm going to pass is just called font style and that's going to just affect this font style of the paragraph um, so you can see that it'll differ depending on what I pass into the component. So I'm going to need a button so that, that that show class component variable can be updated and change value to true because currently it just defaults to false and there's no way to change it. So on click of my button, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call that set show class component and I'm going to pass a value to that, which is the value I want um, the show class component to take on. And because I want to toggle it on and off, I'm going to put not show class component. So it will do the opposite of what its already existing value is. So if it's true, it will go to false. If it's false, it will go to true. And that way the component will be toggled on and off in terms of visibility. Cool, so now that I've got that, once that saves and runs, I should see a button and if I click on it, it tells me that the, oh, okay, it says class component unmounting. I'll look at that in a second. And that does say class component mounted. So you can see I've got the text high from class component. It's red because that's what I passed as the property. And if I increment that count, it increments. And if I turn it off, then it disappears. So that unmounting didn't show. Oh, okay, I can see why. It's because I put component will mount. But I actually want to do component will unmount because I want it to happen as a cleanup sort of function. So you might use this if you've subscribed to something and you want to unsubscribe when the component disappears. You could also use it to clear timeouts if you've set any timeouts in your code. Cool, so now that I've got my class component working, I'm going to go ahead and convert that to a functional component. A um, few reasons why people use functional components. One of the main ones being that they're typically simpler to write. Um, with a functional component, you pass those properties directly in as a parameter. We've got the um, react.useState to set state. So we have individual setting functions for each state variable. So I'm just going to pass a default value of zero there for count. Um, I'm also going to just return um, what I want to render on screen. So the return value of the functional component is what you'll render on screen. And I want that to be pretty much the exact same as what I've done for the functional comp the class component as I'm trying to show you how to convert from a um, class component to a functional component. So I'm just going to do the exact same thing here. I've got a paragraph with a um, class name and that's going to come from the prop props.font style. So I can I don't need to use this inside the functional component because the props are passed in directly and everything's sort of set directly inside that functional component. So I don't actually need to use this anywhere really. And then I'm going to have my count state, which is just that count variable there. It's nice and simple to access. I don't need to go this.state.count. It's just count because that's what I've set it as. Then I'm just going to have another button here, which is going to be used to increment. And once again, the um, setting state for the specific count is quite easy because I've got a function that's specifically corresponding to setting that particular state variable. So I'm just going to set the count to count plus one and give that um, button some text, so increment. And that's pretty much it in terms of what I want it to look like, but I still am missing a bit on 
the component did unmount and component uh, component did mount and component will unmount. So I'm going to use React Effect to mimic that. So you'll go React.use Effect, then you'll pass in a function that you want to be called. It'll get triggered exactly once. Inside that function is basically what would be inside your component will mount or did mount and inside and then you'll return from that basically any cleanup so when your component will unmount so it'll say I'm going to say here functional component is unmounting because at this point it's doing the cleanup and um, yeah this was where you'd unsubscribe or clear any timeouts that you have but just for purposes of making it simple and visible, I've just used alerts here. So I'm just going to do the same thing again. I'm going to have a state to show my functional component so I can basically interact in it the same way you saw for my class component. It's defaulting to using a false, to having a false value. Um, I'm going to have another button which is showing my functional component. And once again, that's just going to toggle that value of the func show functional component. Um, I'll just update that text so it makes sense for the situation. And then basically I'm going to have the same sort of conditional. So I'm going to check whether show functional component is true. And if it is, I'm going to show my functional component and pass in a property in the same way that I would with a class component but I'll pass a different value for this one so you can see that it does a different effect depending on the property that I pass to it. So now if I toggle my class component, it says class component mounted, I can increment the state, I can mount my um, functional component and increment the state, and then I can unmount it and it'll, post, it'll make an alert for that so you can sort of see that it's unmounted. It can do the same for the class component. So yeah, that's pretty much all I have for today. It should give you the basics of how to go from a class component to a functional comp component and vice versa. And I really hope this has helped you guys. I'll post the link to the code pen in the description below.